Hey guys, it's Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I am gonna show you how to paint a textured ceiling. And I'm gonna show you how to do it so that you get great results, but the whole process is as painless as possible because painting a ceiling is definitely not the most fun thing to paint. I'm actually pretty excited to get our ceiling painted because we just had some new lights put in and so there were big holes in the ceiling where the old lights used to be. There's also just dark areas where soot from our fireplace has made gray spots. So I know this is really gonna brighten up our room. As far as your paint, for a ceiling, you're gonna to wanna to use a flat paint. Flat paints aren't great for walls a lot of times because they're really hard to wipe down and scrub, but most of us are not scrubbing our ceilings, and flat paints hide any imperfections in the surface that you're painting. You're also gonna need a paint roller that is meant for textured surfaces. If you're painting a textured ceiling like I am, that just has a thicker nap and it really helps get the paint into all the grooves without you having to put a lot of pressure on it. You're gonna need a good angle brush for cutting in around the edges. I personally love using purdy paint brushes. And you're gonna need a roller extension for your paint roller as well. A uh, roller extension is really just a long handle and you screw it into the handle of your paint roller so that you can reach the ceiling to roll it without having to get up and down on the ladder five billion times. You will still need a ladder for cutting in around the edges of the ceiling, but this still saves tons of time. You'll probably need some painter's tape. You may wanna use it along the edges where your walls meet your ceiling, but even if you're comfortable cutting in around the edges without tape, you're almost definitely gonna need some painter's tape to protect your light fixtures. If you have any small nail holes where you had a hook or something in the ceiling, you'll need some spackling and a putty knife. And if you have had any extensive patching done on your ceiling, you're also gonna need some paint texture additive. Like I said, we had some new lights installed and so I patched some fairly large holes with where there used to be light fixtures and now there are not. So I'm gonna be using a bit of paint texture to make those really smooth areas match the rest of the ceiling. And finally, you're gonna need some drop cloths. And I'll have a list of all the materials you need plus printable instructions at my website, Lovely Etc. So to be totally honest, I probably wouldn't normally cover and protect everything quite this much because painting a ceiling does not have to be crazy messy. But that's because I'm a pretty experienced painter and I'm comfortable with my level of painting mess that I know will be created. And I know many of you may not be so experienced. If you know you're more messy, I would definitely cover things to this extent. And if you're wondering why I haven't covered the floor at all, it's just because our floor is sealed. I've definitely gotten paint on it before and I know that it can come off easily. If your floor is a different situation like carpet, definitely go ahead and cover it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add some paint texture to the areas of the ceiling that I patched. Right now they look super smooth and really stand out from the rest of the ceiling, which has a very specific textured pattern. Patching the texture is actually super easy. Just add the paint texture, which is basically sand, to a cup with some of your paint and mix it together well. And then use a chip brush to brush it onto your ceiling and just try to follow the pattern of the texture that's already on your ceiling, whether it's a scallop pattern like mine or more of a popcorn texture or some other pattern. I've taped off all my light fixtures and now finally it's time to start painting. I'm gonna start at one end of the room and make my way towards the other end of the room. And I'm gonna cut in around the edges of the ceiling where it meets the wall with my angled paintbrush and also around the lights that I've taped off and then come back and fill in with the paint roller. I'm not gonna cut in the entire room before using the paint roller because this is a pretty big space. And if you do that and the paint that is around the edges that you painted with the paintbrush completely dries before you come back with the roller, it can end up not looking completely even. The edges might look a little lighter or darker than the middle. It's confusing because you're using the exact same paint, but it has to do with maintaining a wet edge as you're painting. You don't really want a harsh line that's dried differently from the paint beside it. So in any case, I'm gonna do a small area of cutting in and then come back and fill in with the roller. All right, so I've moved my ladder here to the corner. This is where I'm starting. I put some of my paint in this um, plastic cup just because it makes it easier to handle as I'm going up and down the ladder. A small paint bucket is also fine. And I have my angle brush, so I'm ready to start cutting in. The room I'm painting has basically white walls and trim and also a white ceiling, so that makes it really easy. I don't have to worry terribly much about being exactly 100% precise when I'm cutting in. If you are painting your ceiling a fun color, 
or if you're painting your ceiling white and your walls have a color on them, you do have to be a little bit more careful. You can still skip the painter's tape if you're comfortable with cutting in, and if you're not, you can practice and see if it works out for you. It's not terribly hard. You just need practice to get your angle right. Or you can use painter's tape. If you are gonna use painter's tape, I have a post on my website, Level Etc., that talks about exactly how to use painter's tape so you get really, really perfect paint lines every time. It seems like just sticking the tape up there should be enough, but a lot of times it's not. So I will say, if you're gonna use it, make sure you place it really precisely. Press your finger along the edge to press it down really well to where you're gonna paint. But if you have a very dramatic color difference between your wall and your ceiling, you may also want to do a couple of extra steps to seal the edges of your tape. If you're gonna be cutting in around the edges of your ceiling without using painter's tape, I have a few tips that will help you get really clean, crisp paint lines. First, make sure you don't overload your brush with paint. You want it wet, but not dripping, because that just makes the paint harder to control. When you start painting, start with your brush about a half inch or so away from where the ceiling meets the wall, and then slowly move it closer to the line. And make sure as you're painting that you don't apply a lot of pressure to the paintbrush, because that's just gonna cause paint to squeeze out and spread to places where you don't really want it. Really the main key to getting really beautiful paint lines is just having a steady hand, finding the right angle, and taking it slow. This is not a time when you want to rush. And it's also helpful to keep a wet rag nearby for quickly cleaning up any mess ups. Paint's actually pretty forgiving when it's wet, so a lot of times if you get a little bit of paint on the wall, you can just quickly wipe it up. So I've cut in around the edges of the ceiling and the lights in this area, and now I'm ready to do some filling in with the roller. So I'm using this Purdy Colossus roller cover, which is for textured rough surfaces, and it's very important if you're painting a textured ceiling that you use a roller specifically for textured surfaces. This has a three quarter inch nap, which means that all this is really thick so that it can hold a lot of paint and it can really push the paint into the low areas of the textured ceiling, which will make things go much faster. <laughs> When you are loading up your roller with paint, you wanna get it down here in the paint and make sure that all the sides are covered all the way around. And then roll it up at the top part to get off the excess paint. Your goal is you want your paint roller to be pretty wet. And especially with this high nap, you wanna try to get paint down into all these little crevices and low spots. So you want your paint roller to be wet, but not dripping. Because obviously when you're painting a ceiling overhead, dripping paint is your worst nightmare. And the last step before we can start actually rolling on the paint is adding our extension rod to the paint roller. Um, this extension rod I've actually been using as a broom. It is a paint roller extension rod. But a lot of times you can use a broom handle for an extension rod as well if you don't want to buy one. You just unscrew it from your broom and screw it right onto your paint roller. You do want to make sure, especially if you're just using a broom handle, that it is pretty sturdy. And if you are painting a ceiling that's higher than eight feet, you probably will need a telescoping extension rod that extends out a little bit extra. So I am gonna use my ladder as I'm rolling the paint right around the edges of the room where I need to be extra careful and really have good aim. But for the rest of the room, I shouldn't have to be going up and down this ladder. The good news is rolling the paint onto your ceiling goes much faster and is much easier than cutting in around the edges. You may have seen or heard before that when you are rolling paint onto a wall or a ceiling, you should try to move your roller in a W pattern. The main point of that is just that you don't wanna be going back and forth over the same section over and over. And you do want the sections where you're rolling on the paint to slightly overlap. So the W shape makes that really easy to visualize. When you're painting a ceiling, doing a literal W isn't always the easiest because you're working overhead. Just make sure that you're overlapping your paint strokes and keeping the roller moving. As you're rolling paint onto your ceiling, if you start to feel like you really need to press down on the roller to get the paint to transfer, that just means it's time to get more paint. You don't wanna be having to press down really firmly with the roller because that's gonna lead to lots of tiny little paint drips splattering down onto everything else in your room. Once you finish your first coat of paint, there's a good chance it's gonna look pretty splotchy and uneven. That's totally normal, especially when you're using white or a really light color. Usually two coats of paint is plenty for a ceiling unless you're doing a very dramatic color change from very dark to very light or the other way. So don't worry if the first coat doesn't look great. Thankfully, the second coat of paint usually goes much faster than the first. And generally, in my experience, only takes about half the time. 
I am so glad that is finished. Honestly, I would probably rather paint the walls of three or four rooms than paint one giant ceiling because it really is a pain and it takes a long time and it's awkward painting over your head. But even having said all that, I am so glad that I finally painted the ceiling in these two rooms. It looks so much better and it makes the rooms so much brighter and it was definitely worth it. If you haven't, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share lots of inexpensive DIY ideas for creating a home that you love.